I constantly remember the foot dust of Sri Radhika, whose unlimited power instantly subdues even the Supreme Person, Sri Krishna. <clears throat> who himself cannot be easily seen even by the greatest devotees like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Sukadev Muni, Narada Muni, and Bhishma. How is the sound this morning? Is it okay? Perfect. Very good. Uh, so, I think we are still in this uh, first paragraph of the commentary. Uh, I think we ended with the sentence, Krishna's childhood pastimes were still slightly perceived by Brahma, Shiva, and Narada, but his romantic pastimes in adolescence were not seen by them, nor by anyone else who identifies himself with his male body. Chaitanya Charitamrita states, Sabe ek saki ganera iha adhikara saki vina elilara Anyera Nahigati. <clears throat> only, only Krishna's girlfriends can enter into this. No one else. No, only just just a just a reminder here that but, um the mood of a child, the childhood Krishna is by its very nature more, more open, mm -hmm. more soft, and that it's easier for any heart to come into relation with the heart of a child. And then as we grow older, this becomes more covered by material issues. It's the lesson of the uh, 1 Corinthians 12, that is a favorite of Gurudev's, you might remember. Through a, through a glass darkly, this, this. Yeah, would have been very beautiful. This is... Uh, a nice, nice view on this. And I like to add one thing before that male body is also including or uh, male consciousness. This mm. is including uh, the the female bodies in the material world because mm. they are all has this uh, enjoying tendency. Because of this, this is not only meaning of uh, male bodies, it's also the female bodies in the material world. Because they they're both has this enjoying tendency. So they have no entrance. Very good. Yes, and one more thing is also, what is the meaning of a child? There is no erotic lila. Mm -hmm. And uh, because there is the child is so pure, and we we say, oh, it's uh, it's not the adult uh, lila of uh, Radha Mohan. Well, we could say it's true what you say, but we might also say that the child is all erotic, or. The child wears its pleasure on its on its skin. Everything is 
every little tickle, every little taste, every little sight and sound is a immediate pleasure stimulation. <laughs> Saying the same thing differently. <laughs> The worship, <clears throat> the worship in Vraj is one of pure sweetness. And those who worship Krishna in awe and reverence cannot attain him in Vraj. For there, he is the God of divine sweetness. Ashvarya Gyane Nahi Pai Raja Vrajendra Nandana Raga Bhakti Vraje Svayam Bhagavan Pai Vidhi Bhakti Parshada Dehe Vaikunte Yai. One who worships Krishna spontaneously will attain Vraj. One who worships Krishna spontaneously will attain Vraj. And one who worships him according to rules and regulations will become the Lord's associate in maj majestic Vaikuntha. The first is Raganuga Bhakti, the second is Vaidhi Bhakti. Yeah. And just a note, when we speak about worshipping Krishna, and this is most of these uh, shlokas are pointed towards Krishna, we obviously understand that Krishna in Viraj is, is, is empty is devoid of any real deep bhav without Radharani. So Radharani is hidden in these shlokas, but we implicitly, we know it, and when we're speaking of Krishna, we're speaking of Radha's Krishna. Yeah. We spent a lot of time discussing that yesterday. But, uh, Radha Krishna or Radha Mohan? Radha Mohan, yeah. So just wanted to emphasize that. Um, <clears throat> One who worships Krishna spontaneously, <clears throat> Raghunuga Bhakti, will attain Vraj. And one who worships him according to rules and regulations, Vaidhi Bhakti, will become the Lord's associate in majestic Vaikuntha. which I know we're always glorifying Raghunuga Bhakti, and of course, that's our, that's our path. But we should never minimize uh, this, this, this uh, Vaikuntha uh, realization either. That's also a very high, high thing. Brahma, Shiva, Sukha, Narada, and Bhishma are devotees of the latter kind. And by them, the sweetness of Govinda is barely perceived. The great power of Sri Radha's foot dust easily controls that supreme person, Sri Krishna. The great power of Shirada's foot dust easily controls that supreme person, Sri Krishna. Srila Thakura Mahashaya of Narutam Das Thakur sings. 
Radhika Charana Renu Bhushana Kuriyatanu Anayase Pabe Giridari Radhika Charana Shraya Ye Kure Se Mahasaya Tare Muhi Yao Boli Hari If you decorate your body with Radhika's foot dust, you will easily attain Giridari. I praise that great soul who takes shelter of Radhika's lotus feet. So we see the contrast with easily attaining Giridhari versus the Brahma Shiva Sukha Narada who barely, barely perceive the sweetness of Govinda. If you decorate your body with Radhika's foot dust, you easily attain Giridhari. So, I would like to ask um, someone to please explain what it means, really, for us to decorate our bodies with Radhika's power powder, the her foot dust. Practically speaking, what does it mean for us? How do we do this? So it's not a rhetorical question, it's a, I really wanted to hear from someone who is doing this and who can share a little bit this, this practice, the feeling or whatever, however this is done. Radha's body is, is Prem. Radha's body is love for the Divine, love for Moan. So we can use the idea of the dust, the image of the dust, to let us imagine spreading this prem on our body. And thereby feeling it from end to end, feeling, feeling love for more on her love for Moan, putting ourselves in her emotions, sharing this emotion that she has, this love she has. And by doing that, our hearts soften, our, our, our souls open, we find our way to our soul identity. And we become part of the service of this love she has for her mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more concretely meditate on letting this love flow through us mm -hmm. so that she can let it flow to her Moan. So this lotus the dust of the lotus feet means somehow this power, but seductive power, but um, tender, loving power. Mm. And this is what we need to have smeared all over our bodies. So that our relation to the divine doesn't go through majesty and opulence and <clears throat> and regulations and power uh, power of the brutal kind, mm. but it goes through power of the of the heart of the softened heart. 
Maybe that's the message of bhakti, that there are two kinds of power in the world. Mm. Actually, I tried to write about this yesterday. Mm. That, that there's power of the hammer, and then there's power of the heart. Mm. Wow. One is external, mm. and one is internal. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Mm. Just all day, Jai Guru Dev. Mahatma Ji, Jai Radhe. Jai Radhe. Um. Yes, beautiful point, Udav. I I feel similar to you that Radhika's foot dust is her loving mood, and. If we are able to decorate our entire body, so cover our entire body from the very top of our head to the very bottom of our feet in this loving mood, this is all we see. This is all we feel. There's nothing else. We are totally single-pointed focus die bob in this mood because there's no space for anything else our body is all consumed with this with this loving mood and in that way we can easily attain giddy daddy I think if we manage that, we've already attained it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that, um, yeah, that's, that's really, you know, that's, that's the highest realization, you know, and that's af what we're after, I'll, you know, definitely. Um, I, I like to um, kind of speak more from my, or from a practice practitioner's position. And I know I've, I'm just repeating what Uddhavaji has mentioned many times that if we can somehow, if we can somehow correct our vision so that we see Radha's love in everything, in everyone, that this foot dust is like this, this, this um, very, very fine uh, uh, aerosoled. Uh, powder that's that's just permeating everything. It's covering ev nothing is left untouched by it. So that in our daily lives, from the moment we wake to the moment we sleep, everything that we come in contact with, we perceive this as being touched by Radha's love. So no matter, and Guru Dave's always saying, you know, something. Uh, what we say, you know, supposedly good things, supposedly bad things, and we know there is no good and bad. Everything is 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 pure love. So if we can see everything anointed with this, with this energy of Radha's love, then this this practice will help us attain this 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 higher level that you're referring to. Um, so to develop this vision is. Is a practice, yeah. I mean, it's something we consciously have to be aware of Radharani's mercy, her love in everything, in everyone, in every object, in every creature, in every circumstance, in every encounter. That the divine is is present, is there, is covering, is is covering it, is in, is permeating it. Mm. Yeah, I I feel that this is this is our sadhana that our Gurudev is teaching. We we don't have a 
set number of rounds that we're supposed to chant a day. We don't have any, um, you know, of the of the rules that we take when we take when Gurudev gives initiations. He doesn't take any rules. He doesn't require anything. And as we practice, he this is this is what we what we strive for. This is this is our daily sadhana is to to live in this loving mood and to see every interaction as mercy, to see everything as mercy that comes. And in this way, it is, it is all, all positive, um, all loving. And, and the, to me, the way to do this is, I mean, it all comes from from mercy, all from all from Guru Kripa, and if we can shift through mercy our vision from this doer, where I'm doing this, to a viewer, where we're watching life happen to us, even in the material world. then perhaps it's a little bit easier to remove these judgments of, oh, this was good or this is bad. We can simply observe them with this loving lens. And Guru Kripa, the <clears throat> this is the key, as you say. But what does this mean in practice? And to, to come and bring it back to Siddhanta Siddhantaji's question, which I feel more and more should be our question. So many devotees wondering what to do and how to practice. Yeah. Um. Guru Kripa means keeping Guru in the heart. And when Guru is in the heart, then this mood is there. This mood of opening is there. So it's not, not something he puts in your hand. It's not a secret he whispers in your ear. Mm. And it's a, it's a mood. And you only have to meet him once. You only have to look into his sweet eyes once. Or feel that smile wash over you once. And then you have the kripa, the, the mercy, that mood. And you can go through your whole life, sit a, a thousand miles away, and remember this feeling you had. And that is the key to take you to this feeling of of the open heart, of sitting beside Radharani. Mm. Your guru is an old friend. Your guru has always been your guru. If you happen to have met him in physical form in this life, well, then you're very fortunate. But it was just old friends meeting after a thousand million lives of being together in separation. So all it takes is to bring this feeling into your heart. And then we can see Radharani like we're just like it's described here by Narotama Dasta Takura. It's not rocket science, as we like to say in the in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It's just one tiny movement of the heart of consciousness towards opening to Guru's mood, and then everything else opens too. A millimeter movement of the heart, and then suddenly it 
all come splashing into us. Radhe Radhe, Radhe Radhe Gurudev and all the good. Um, I would like to add, um, when I was there in Rindavan last time, um, it seems for me like it, it's a long time ago, but it's actually just one and a half months ago. But uh, Gurudev often mentioned that uh, Guru Kripa, that we can feel when Guru Kripa is flowing, is when we start to understand Gurudev words, or also perhaps then the words of the Acharyas from the Shastras, that we really um, begin to understand the meaning behind and the words of Gurudev. So then we can feel that Kripa starts to flow. And what means understanding, no hearing, we, yeah, I can hear the words and they are passing through my ears. Often <laughs> it's like this. But we, when we have this little moment of, aha, I think I, I got it in my heart, what Gurudev really means when he's saying something. So, yeah. Dayo. Dayo. <laughs> <clears throat> and perhaps those are the same. Those aha moments are when we're feeling, when our heart opens to this message. We're no longer hearing it as you just beautifully described my yoga shakti in our in our head, but it's actually the message is being received in our heart. Mm -hmm. And this is the same place where Buddha is talking and sharing about his is about um, holding the mood of Gurudev. If we can hold this mood in our heart, so it's in the same area we're just working on, or we're just praying that we can. Um, that this space will open for us, we can receive this mercy so that we can both understand the scripture in the heart, understand, feel, feel the meaning, feel the words of, of these acharyas and of this loving energy that flows through these words and the mood of the mood of Gurudev. You know, to me, I, I feel, I love Uddhav, how you described the, the mood of Gurudev. It's, it's such a beautiful example. And, um sometimes in in my experience when when i'm you know in in the room personally with him it's easy to get overwhelmed by his feelings and not really like know what's going on or you know because you have this this one-on-one -on -one relationship going on you're like whoa you walk out of there and it was like a whirlwind of like my god what just happened you know and um witnessing him sitting in the room close to him and witnessing him engage with others gives you this perspective that we've been talking about the viewer so instead of being this doer where you're engaged in the emotions and everything is so wrapped up you're like i can't see anything i'm just feeling so much when we're when we're sitting beside him and someone new walks in the door or someone that perhaps is is one of Gurudev's oldest devotees, but hasn't been there in, you know, 10 years, which certainly, as we all know, even being away from Vrindavan in a week makes it seem like it's been 10 years since we've been there. The exchange and his mood of every person that comes through that door, this loving feeling, this like just pouring out of loving energy that happens for every single person that walks through that door is really, to me, the the essence of of his mood and the way that he treats his his neighbor. You know, Gurudev always says, as Jesus said, "Love your neighbor." And who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is those that are close to you. And so, this can be a physical presence. It can also be more of a of a deeper connection of a spiritual connection we're all neighbors here we're all brothers and sisters here and so sharing this loving mood um 
as you as you beautifully described Udo, is is really i feel also the the essence of of guru kripa yeah Inja. very nice and now maybe to segue back into this this is um a nice uh, observation you talk about witnessing this observation as the as the viewer is is so important um and this is all this is all Radharani's mercy we know that uh, our gurudev is totally immersed in his foot dust and he is uh exhibiting this through his words his feelings his actions that he he wears his heart on his sleeve as we say that he's he's an open book we see we see into his heart and this is radharani's love that he is reflecting to all of us so um <clears throat> if you decorate your body with radhika's foot dust you will easily attain giridari i praise that great soul who take shelter of Radhika's lotus feet. And we were just doing that. <laughs> the only means <clears throat> to subdue, the only means to subdue Shri Krishna is love and devotion. The Upanishads say, Bhakti Vashaha Purushaha. The limit of love is called Mahabhav. <laughs> the limit of love is called Mahabhav. Here, I believe limit means the, 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 the highest point of it, right? The, the limit. Not that, not that it's limited, it's unlimited. But limit, I believe, means the highest point. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Chaitanya Charitam, Char, Charitamrita says, Prema krame badehoi sneha mana pranaya, raga anuraga bhava maha bhava hoi, preme ra paramashara maha bhava jani, se maha bhavu rupa radha takurani. Prem gradually grows into sneha, mana, pranaya, raga, bhava, and mahabhav. I don't have all of these definitions on the tip of my tongue, so if someone would like to just briefly give the translation of these sneha, Mana, Pranaya, Raga, Baba, and Mahabhav. Usually, I refer to our dear Jayananda Maharaj. I don't see him. I yeah, mean, the, I know. There's a the, the different, it's the continuum of the different levels of love. Yeah. So, from Sneha preference to Mana to which is mm. a more impassioned feeling, pranaya, which is mm. love with the depth, raga, which is even higher, passion, bhava, bhava, and then mahabhava is the highest. Yeah. <clears throat> so the highest stage of prem is mahabhava, <clears throat> and goddess Radha is the very form of that Mahabhav. So this was translation of that shlok from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prema gradually grows into Sneha, Mana, Pranaya, Raga, Bhava, and Mahabhav. And the highest stage of Prem is Mahabhav. And Goddess Radha is the very form. Say Mahabhavu Rupa. 
Radha Takurani, the goddess, you know, is the the the, the Mahabharata. Goddess Radha is the very form of that Mahabharat. Innumerable streams of the honey of Mahabhav flow from Sri Radhika's lotus feet. And there's a reference to verse 94 of this book, which we'll get to at this rate in a year or so. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's all good. Um, so, flow from Sri Radhika's lotus feet. Therefore, it is understandable that Sri Krishna is wholly controlled by the dust of her lotus feet. Innumerable streams of the honey of Mahabhav flow from Shiradika's lotus feet. Therefore, it is understandable that Krishna is wholly controlled by the dust of her lotus feet. Srila Jiva Goswami has written in his Bhakti Sandarbha, Prema Taratam Yenaiva Bhakta Mahataratam Yam Mukyam. The more Prema you have, the greater you are. And in his Ananda Chandrika commentary, on Sri Rupa Goswami's Ujvala Nilamani, Sakki Prakarana, Text 6, Sri Vishwanath Chakravartipad writes, and I'm just going to skip, skip over this, this is quite long, so I'll just skip into the translation. This is in Rupa Goswami's, uh, I'm sorry, in his. Uh, Vishwanath Chakravati Pad's commentary on Rupa Goswami's Uchvala Nilamani, he says, Although there are unlimited <coughs> varieties of love, they can be classified fourfold according to their amount. The ordinary practitioners have an atomic amount of love. Devotees like Narada Muni and others have love in greater or lesser amounts. The people of Raj have great love of Krishna and Sri Radhika the queen of Vrindavan. <laughs> the, I'm sorry. The, the queen of Vrindavan has the greatest love. Naturally, therefore, she also controls him to the greatest extent. So we don't normally think of love as being quantifiable. We tend to think of it as absolute. It's not like there's more or less of it. But in it, it's in this, this is a transcendental type of quantifiable. So a little bit hard for us to think in terms of this love being quantifiable. But here we have this this delineation, if you like, here about the varieties of love. Yeah, for anyone who's in interested in this, um, excuse me. Go ahead. No, no, sorry. no, no. I mean, this is the kind of <clears throat> this is the kind of uh, analysis you have, you have analysis you have in uh, 
Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu of uh, Rupa Goswami, he, he sort of picks apart love and tells you all the different levels of feeling that uh, are hiding inside of it. <clears throat> but I wanted to underline that this the last sentence is the most wonderful of this of this citation that she has the control because she has the greatest love. That's the point. That the control of of Krishna does not come from muscle or majesty or power in any sort of material way sense. Control of Krishna comes from the softest mm. part. The one with the greatest love has the greatest control. Yeah, it kind of this verse definitely brings to mind the the Dhammadar Lila, yeah, that we recently were uh, observing here in Vrindavan, where Mother Yashoda is trying to bind Krishna, and only, only, only by entering into the loving, loving mood as the mother. This this Vatsaya Ras, right? The the, the the pinnacle of Vatsaya Ras, this loving mood of Yashodama for 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 uh for Gopal, is she able to bind him? So this is similar. So you know, I I we 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 feel, we hear that this Madhuya Ras, this Radharani's love is the highest, of course. Mm -hmm. But this is should not in any way diminish whether you show this love for Krishna exhibited in this Vatsaya Ras pastime of the Dhammadar Lila. Mm -hmm. Similar, mm -hmm. similar. Um, Mahatma, the G you wanted to share. Um, I was I kind of I had this image come to mind when we were describing the amount of love. And then, Siddhanta, you were kind of sharing about how we were quantifying it. Perhaps we can use the the image similar to how we sometimes talk about um, mercy. Our hearts are these these pots, and and these pots, you know, when when we come with all of our coverings, there's all these holes in them. And perhaps we can use this analogy as well for the amount of love that we have. So when the ordinary practitioners, our pot is smaller, so we're only capable of, of holding, of feeling this smaller amount, this atomic amount of love. And then as we go down this path of bhakti and through seva and through kripa, mm -hmm. our heart is, is cleaned, is purified. And in this way, all of the coverings that we've accumulated for who knows how many hundreds or thousands of lifetimes are cleared and space is created for these pots to grow. And as these pots are grow, as, as, as this pot grows into this new space, it's able of holding and feeling more love. So the ordinary practitioners, we have this teeny, teeny, tiny pot, this atomic size pot. So we can feel just the smallest amount of love. Mm -hmm. Devotees like Nada Muni have pots in variable sizes. The people of Vraj have larger mm -hmm. pots even than devotees. And Sri Radhike has the largest pot. Mm -hmm. uh, Sri Radhi. Because she is the source. Yeah. And as closer one comes to the source, as bigger is the love. So we can understand that one who is uh, like to enter directly in uh, Krishna uh, service or Krishna's relationship without Radhika, there is less love because he he went to the wrong direction actually. So first 
everyone who likes to be in love first has to see Radhika. Because not no Krishna is the source of love. It's Radhika. And on another part, she is described as Mahabhav. She is Mahabhav, personified. And uh, we have Mahabhav. We get the Mahabhav by put her foot dust on our spiritual bodies, fully taking shelter on her. There is no place for other things. Our whole body is is uh, in oh. covered with her foot dust. That means with Mahabhav. So we get it, and we're fully taking shelter on her mercy because the foot dust is the mercy of Sri Radhika. And this is the point that we come to the source. As more close we come to the source, as bigger the part of the love in our heart will be. As more far we stay, it's uh, also this example of the fire we remember. When iron comes close to the fire, it also becomes fire. But it has to be very close. So, so need to add that it has to be inside the fire. To get the same quality than the fire. But the uh, fire is always the source. <laughs> From the source, we get the fire or the mercy. Mm -hmm. Radhi. 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 Sorry, Radhi. Radhi. No, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to share that you um, you mentioned decorating our our spiritual bodies with this with this foot dust and mm -hmm. i feel that this can this can also be a practice in our sadaka vesh you know we That's try the way this. Yes, this, is, right. this, this this is how we get there is we are constantly practicing decorating our body in this, mm -hmm. foot dust, in this loving mood and and it is as siddhanta has pointed out it's a practice you know, it's it's something that we're constantly working on. Perhaps I'm able to, through through mercy, through kripa, able to, you know, cover a bit of my heart in this foot dust for an hour, and then the wind blows and it gets swept away, and I come back to living in the the coverings that I've had before. But perhaps then later more mercy comes, and perhaps the foot dust sits in my heart a little bit longer or perhaps it expands a little bit more covers a little bit more of my body and then again the wind blows and swipes it away and this is why it's a practice because the foot dust is is always coming to us it's always recovering us and this is the mercy this is the true mercy of gurudev of mahaprabhu of radharani this is why she's the most compassionate one is she is always taking care of us She's constantly sprinkling her foot dust back down, and then we're constantly blowing it away off of our bodies. And with time, with mercy, um, we perhaps are praying for this foot dust to, to stick a little bit. And perhaps it sticks a little bit here, and then sticks a little bit more, and a little bit more. And in this way, slowly, slowly, um, we can have our entire body, our entire body here, our sadhaka vesh, this material body covered in this um, in this foot dust, in this loving mood. And this is the the realization of our spiritual body. Mm. Yes. Yeah. We can see the example of Raghunath Das, right? 
how he depend on this food dust. He is always praying for that. And uh, he get it in the Sadaka Vesh and in the, his uh, Siddhasvaru, both. He fully surrendered to that mercy mm -hmm. of Radhika. Mm -hmm. And when Radhika is <laughs> giving darshan, it's there, but he also feels this in separation because he is completely meditating on her. Mm. So both is, is, is necessary. We start in the material identification and take shelter on her food dust and by her mercy we get everything. Gurudev is the medium of her mercy. Without him we cannot enter the uh, Siddhadeya. That to remember, there is only he who can give this. It's not that we get it by uh, our own what says this endeavor? Yeah. Endeavor. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's a it's an act of mercy. Mm -hmm. And we can also we see that in every example we give, there is always a guru dev who is uh, uh, like uh, in Raghunath Das, there is Rupa Goswami behind. And uh, yeah, that's the point that we can only get it like a, like we need a mother to take birth in this world. Without the mother, there is not a body available, right? Mm. So, and without a body, we cannot enter this world. The same is in the spiritual world. Without a body, we cannot enter the spiritual world. And in this case, the Guru is the mother mm -hmm. of the spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And both material body and also spiritual body is an act of mercy. Because everyone knows how much hingabe, mm -hmm. devotion, devotion. It, <laughs> thank you, how much devotion it needs to be a mother. Mm -hmm. Day and night she take care of the baby. And uh, night time, the mother just fell in sleep and baby is crying. And she jumped up. So many things. Baby becomes sick. And we can see also our good Dave is doing this seva to us to guide us in the growing. <laughs> but this growing is not the growing actually like in the material world. It's a growing in the feeling and relationship into a spiritual world, the spiritual body and spiritual feeling. So, step by step, Guru Manjari is guiding us, help us to, to live in this body, to enter this spiritual body, to feel, to understand everything there, to feel everything there. So he will be eternally our spiritual mother. By this spiritual mother, 
maybe a question for you, dear Garasundra. By this you don't mean that he gives birth to the spiritual body, but that he's caring for our spiritual body with motherly love. Right? Yeah, it's, it's also an act of birth, because the in the scriptures, they really say it's a second birth. Yeah. It's a, it's but, really a meaning of a birth. So we are. Uh, I mean the 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 possibility is always there. Mm -hmm. Like also in the in the material world, possibility of a body is there, but. To give birth, it needs a mother. I think... <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think the... Um, my feeling is, my understanding is that the spiritual body is... is always there. And it's through Guru Kripa that we can find it. That uh, the Guru doesn't create it in any way. And even I've read somewhere, I can't remember, maybe someone can help, that all our spiritual bodies are already waiting for us in Vrindavan, um, in, the, in the spiritual world, and waiting for us to go take them. Yeah. This I've read in uh, scripture somewhere. Yeah, maybe it's like this. For me, it's uh, he is giving me the body, because he said, he told me the color of my body. He told me the age. He told me everything. So for me, I, I accept him as the mother of my spiritual existence. And without this mother, maybe there is something somewhere, but it's not available. Well, I think that, you know, whatever works for you, I think is fine, whatever, you know, uh, the way you conceive it or your concept, you know, whatever the analogy you use is, is fine. Um, but I, I also <clears throat> tend to think that the Guru is illuminating, you know. We often hear about uh, light or anointing the eyes, giving the vision or whatever, so that he's illuminating this to us. He's revealing, you know, the characteristics of this body, that um, he's not inventing it or he's not creating it for us, but he's illuminating, revealing it to us. But again, it's, you know, um, however you, you like to conceive of it is fine as long as you, you're getting there. You know, that's the point, right? Yeah. If we got the, the birth, the, the, uh, the, the procedure <laughs> of the birth out of this understanding, and under all circumstances, he is or she is the one who is guiding us to growing. She, she learns to, to run with this body, to listen to get the ears, the eyes, using everything is for, uh, his mercy or her mercy. I mean, actually, uh, everything, if we go to the source, back and back and back, so we come again to Mahaprabhu, mm. who brought this in, uh, the, in this world that was not before. There was no meaning of... Uh, uh, the body of a manjari to get the, uh, the spiritual body of a manjari in the yeah. feelings of the manjari. Exactly. You know, we use the words oftentimes manifest and unmanifest. So if something is unmanifest, um, it it exists, but it's not accessible or it's not perceivable. It's not evident. Um, yeah. But it, exist it's just unmanifest so Mahaprabhu you know obviously in the past time it is it is there you know he's just manifesting it so for all of us through his unlimited mercy giving us all access to it and that's that's a beautiful thing so again I don't think we need to get so bogged down in in the analogies it, it, these analogies help us you know to 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 understand it but really what we're after is the is the prayojan you know the attainment and and getting there in the process the process of getting there that we're spending some time today discussing very useful i think for all of us so um yeah that's everything is is nice everything is beautiful 
Yeah, and everyone in, of us can uh, can get it by realization. We we can enter this body and try to be in, and then step by step we can realize really this the spiritual dimension of this body. It's not that it's uh, giving and it's just there. It needs to grow, and the identification with the matter becomes less and less and less, and the identification of the spiritual body becomes more and more and more. Yeah, and this is realization. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, definitely. Um, so there's a process involved, and I know Srila Prabhupada used to call it the science, you know, of self-realization. And uh, Guru Dave also likes to use this word science. And if if we keep reading, um, I'm looking. I don't want to rush us, definitely. I don't want to rush. Uh, you know, that's kind of my my pedagogue uh, <laughs> influence, uh, being a teacher for so many years to keep the students on on uh, mm -hmm. you know the verse you know don't deviate too much but no obviously here that doesn't apply so please unlimited amounts of you know realizations that you have um but in in pertaining to this discussion that we're having this the end of this commentary definitely uh deals with the process and it's um maybe relevant now at this point to continue but please anyone who wants to share i'm not stopping anyone please Hmm. How are we doing with the time? Oh, good, 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 good. good. Yeah, yeah, good, good. When Sripada says, <clears throat> Tam Radhika Charana Renum Anushmarami, I constantly remember Radhika's foot dust. Mm -hmm. He aims at Ashta Kalina Lila Smarana, 24 hour meditation on Radha and Krishna's daily pastimes. This is the main item of Raghunuga Bhakti or spontaneous devotion. Without remembering God, the mind is lifeless, and the dogs and jackals of lust and anger can freely play in it. Rade? Mm -hmm. Can I offer one comment on this 24 hour meditation? Mm -hmm. To me, this, this doesn't mean, you know, sitting in our little bhajan kuti chanting, mm -hmm. living in the, living in the pastimes, meditating on, on Radha and Mohan's daily pastimes. This means living in the feeling of their pastimes 24 hours a day. So for me, you know, it's not possible if I am chanting, you know, one hour in the morning, then this is my, my, what we would maybe term as our traditional meditation time. But then I can live, aim to, you can aim to live in these feelings 24 hours a day in these in these pastimes so it's not that we're necessarily trying to 
always remember exactly what Radha, Radha and Mohan are doing and where they are based on the time of day and put our minds in that particular place, we can still be engaged in our day-to-day material activities, but we're constantly remembering, we're constantly meditating on these feelings that are shared in this pastime. Yeah, that's a nice point. Um, the 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 text, the commentary um, explains similar to what you're saying. Very very similar, um, and um, I mean it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, being in a bhajan kutir and you know remembering this, but it 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 can be that you know, it it can be that in today's day and age maybe it's not as practical but that is how it was done in previous times not so long ago and actually if you go to radical and you you do see the babaji's doing this but anyway yeah i mean for you know to each his own how we you know are according to our time place and circumstance how we execute this is is our individual you know it's up to us individually so um yeah, that's that's good. I, I understand you're speaking for yourself, and that's what we all have to do, right? Is see, in, in, in with our own introspection, see what is possible for us, you know. So that's that's very nice. It's very beautiful what you say. The spirit of it, the the mood of it, is what's important, not the actual, um, you know, the intricacies or the idiosyncrasies of the particular leelas and getting to know but but you know i know for myself it does help you know to to read the govinda lila Amrita and really know the the the, the nitty-gritty details not great beautiful sweet details of the of these pastimes it helps me create these mental images that take me you know closer to it but it shouldn't be a mechanical thing as the commentary will explain here shortly um so i just want to repeat without remembering god the mind is lifeless and the dogs and jackals of lust and anger can freely play in it the sweetest meditation is that of sri sri radha mohan's pastimes mm -hmm. One should not try to remember these pastimes according to a regular schedule. So this is you know, kind of uh, alluding to what you were saying, uh, Mahatmaji, that it's not like a mechanical thing where you have to be sitting in a bhajan kutir and you know rigorously, uh, you know, trying to remember the day, looking at your watch and say, okay, now they're doing this, now they're doing that. No, this is a this is a dead and stale practice. I think, yeah. I mean, you, you know, one of my favorite themes is uh, remembering smarana. Mm. And if we just don't go too fast over the word remember, mm. and uh, and 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 rest for a moment on it, mm. nobody. I mean, it's it's not remembering like I have to remember my keys when I go out the door. It's not this kind of remembering. It's remembering God. And nobody forgets God. Mm -hmm. Nobody forgets God. God is unforgettable. So this kind of remembering is a different kind of... Um, feeling, experience. Remembering God means remembering ourselves, remembering our soul, remembering that God's right there. That God has never left, God is in our soul, that we have a soul, that we have a svarup, and that that svarup is divine. Mm. And keeping this so-called memory, which is not a memory, it's really just a, it's a memory of what is constant. It's not something from the past that disappeared in our minds it's exactly. something that's constantly in us it's and remembering then means staying in our spiritual identity and staying in the realization of the divinity of our spiritual identity 
this is what remembering means. Exactly. And this is when Srila Prabhupada uses his his famously coined expression, Krishna consciousness. We hear it bandied about, you know, everywhere. With the word Krishna consciousness. Krishna conscious. This is what it means to be Krishna conscious. So again, I'm using the the broad term Krishna conscious. Obviously, it's in our path we're referring to it's something more specific, but uh, what you the way you describe is a perfect. I mean, I can't think of a better description of Krishna consciousness than that. You know, being 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 totally present and conscious of our connection, our relationship, and these are the feelings. The feelings are the symptoms of this consciousness. That what we're feeling in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Our, our mood, sometimes sad, sometimes happy, <clears throat> sometimes blissful, sometimes this is all, all the different moods that can manifest within this conscious awareness, this awareness or consciousness that we have. And uh, yeah, so beautifully said by you, definitely. And, but always as a manjari. Under yeah. all circumstances, if we are sad or happy, or, but always, it has to be that of a manjari. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, reading the Vilapakush Manjali by Raghunath Das Goswami, what we just finished in the last few weeks, these, <laughs> these deep, deep lamentations, you know, oh, my life is useless, you know, what's all mm -hmm. in, I can't see my, my Swamini, you know. This it doesn't have to be just you know bliss and a smile on our face, you know, but actually the deepest feelings, realizations are with tears flowing from our eyes and separation. This is this is the height of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ecstasy. Yeah. This is the ex yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like I agree. This is really important. But but I would uh, go even further and say that um Krishna consciousness is Manjari consciousness. And I'll bet Prabhupada would never say this thing, but, but I'll bet if you asked him in private, secretly, <laughs> he would have said, yes, Krishna consciousness means Manjari consciousness. You can still ask him. He's listening. Okay, thank you. Radhe. <laughs> How many? Uh, what the, yeah. I Three. just remember that. Krishna consciousness means Radha consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how you see as a gopi, sakhi or manjari, that depend upon your guru kripa. If you see your istadev radha, To, 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 by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and if you are Gauriya Vaishnava, then there is no uh, Sakhi Vahav or Manjari Vahav with Chaitanya. But if you believe in the philosophy and you want to maintain that sasra, not to Mahaprabhu, then we take the center of Gopi Bhav or Sakhi Bhav. Mm. We have no way. Or it depends upon the Guru realization. How we reach, very rich, he can share that. He cannot share 
share out of that. Why Radha consciousness? Why not Krishna consciousness? This is Guru Kripa. This is Maha Prabhupada Kripa that she is say Krishna consciousness. If you start, you will be the faster progress. Who is conscious with Krishna? They are Krishna consciousness. That is the meaning of Krishna consciousness. And if you start with Krishna, maybe it will take 20, 30 years to you to mm -hmm. come to the Krishna consciousness in the mood of Radha Rani to understand. 10, 20 years you have to give with Krishna, then when the mercy will come in your life of realized person, then you will understand what is the Radha and Krishna, what is the energy of Krishna. And without energy of Krishna, you will never understand Raga Bhakti. Or if we, I will practice in the Bhakti Bhakti, then we will stay. As a religious, not like a, a spiritual. Prophet, so it's clear. Yeah. Money uh, is only who worship Caitanya. He know the Manovistham means the heart of the Caitanya who, who understand Unnat Ujjwal Rasha. Unnat, what he progressed, the rasa. Ujjwal rasa was there, what he improved there. And why he improved? Because Bhakti Shriyam. Why is Bhakti Shriyam? Because Manjari Bhav practice is Siddha Deha requirement. Without Siddha Deha, and you will not go for realization, for attachment with all material thing. I want to go to Siddha Deha. It's not possible. And I don't do bhajan and I want to be a manjari. It's not possible. For that, Sravan and Kirtan is important to develop your bhajan. If, if, I never take any promises you have to do because you have to, not 16 and 64 round, you have to chant all the time. You cannot live without name. That is Manjari Bhav. When you will not do bhajan, how you will realize? This is a bhajan kriya. Always you have to, you have to greedy for bhajan. Then Manjari Bhav is coming in a very difficult way, Mahaprabhu give, and very realized and the highest way he give. It's not easy. Why not they talk about Manjari Bhav? Because it's, it has to do. You cannot escape by doing. So it's a Krishna concerts also in Gopi Bhav, Sakhi Bhav, Sakha Bhav. Many are the Krishna concerts. And no Bhav, also they are there. Also in the Krishna devotee, not Krishna consciousness, sorry, Krishna devotee in many Bhavs. Any feeling, without feeling also they are devotee. No relation, then also devotee. So it's no meaningful, it's not science. They don't know the science of Krishna. They will never reach, they will only deal in the name of Krishna. That's it, that's it.
That's what we learn from you, Gurudev, that we have to fix our position and that of our Ishtadev first. And if that is not fixed, then there is no meaning of relationship. If I'm a gopi, okay. If I'm a saki, okay. If I'm a gopa, okay. Then I'm fixed and I can go in relationship. But if I not, then I'm who I am and to whom I'm in relation. There is no meaning. But in our case, we are really in the relationship of uh, Manjari. And then we become Swamini's shadows. And uh, we cannot be out of that identification as a manjari. And even in the material body, we always feel as a manjari. We change our, our nature. Yesterday, I'm sitting afternoon, then under Kaprabhuka. He said, in Russian class, they are talking about. Uh, Radha Krishna is together and they feel separation. <laughs> One Leela. <laughs> he is also from Radha Kunda and is reading that book. So, in that stroke pastime, but my the, but my the, Radhika rival Chandravali name. Also, Chandravali is there. Radharani, first Radharani story. Padma story, Chandravali story. So, this story was there. What you say about this? Me? No, he's asked me what you say they are talking uh, about. Okay. In the same class from other Baba book. Mm. On the past time, he's right. Because every time, different, different pastime is happening. So you cannot say that is not right, that is right. All mm. the pastime is right. But you see the gift and mercy of Anandas Babaji that he is preparing us for the Manjari Bhav. Mm. And he excludes Padmavati pastime or Chandravati pastime. Not a, 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 a enemy or what you say? Rival. Rival. Rival news and stories. He only fixed 
what how to prepare for manjari how what is the manjari meaning and how to practice and develop that power why i select this book what is the meaning of manjari what they do and how to develop in sadak deha and siddh deha my idea uh, constitutional situation if i not fix what i will fix i will see from there mm. if i physical body i want to relate i will relate with that i want to make a relation i will make a relation with that and then we think that we are in relation and without a spiritual body is not a permanent relation divine relation will not come only i will run for the material physical relation <laughs> and that is the beauty of anandas baba ji how he protect us not in the other other past time and other thing he also mention about the past time of how the, they are together but they are feeling separation in different directions but that to realize and to, to understand that is a wow, very good we are the practicing is so super thing i say yes he protect us first to fix then go in the different different system if you like if you don't like it stay with your bhajan you need only your constitutional position i yeah, identification right the radha did not come the comment i'll go check could it if This means Thai Bhav. There is no other interest. Why to think about others? There was one uh, in the in the Lila. There was one who went to the Chantravali's place and got got some milk there, buttermilk, I think. We we know the reaction of Swami. Isn't it? He bring only leaf a cup from that area. The Gnadas throw that leaf because this is not my mood to take this uh, butter milk from that. He even not accept the. Uh, the uh, buttermilk what to mean of of stories you know no buttermilk no he don't accept this leaf cup this aha is... aha even the leaf cup near to nandagaon there is a one chandravali village so he is showing the nishtha for radhika na uh. <laughs> He is in Radha Bhajan. He don't want to deviate for any other things that he want to show. That was Radha Radha. Now eight happened. Hmm. Eight. Eight o'clock. <laughs> Five. Oh, really? जय श्री राधे जय गुरुदेव जय जय श्री राधे जय राधे प्रभु पास से वन थिंग आई रिमेम्बर इज अ स्लो बट इज अ स्टडी वाई स्लो because without realization i will not accept it so so only by listening you will not accept when you not realize it 
so it takes time but it will be never go out from that what you realize it so is a slow but steady and this slow is also progress because mm. being in that mood so is slow is also meaningful Jai Shri Radhe. Radhe. This morning we was a lot of uh, listeners here. There was a sharing was twenty two. Wow! It's amazing It's for the right. morning class because yeah. you are there. Yeah, yeah. many people yeah. from Japan also. Thank you for joining. I translated to Japanese today. Thank you. Very nice. Yes, Kishori, so nice. Oh, I was very nice. I was listening. When Uddhav said, "Ask to me," then I say about Krishna consciousness. Don't know. Thank you very much. I become Radha conscious. This is Kripa directly become. If twenty mm -hmm. years, I save my time for only practicing with Krishna. This is mercy of Prabhupada. This is Krishna conscious. Who is the conscious of Krishna to follow that? Jai Jai Sri Ram.